Life in Mexico is not all margaritas and sunsets. Sometimes the margaritas are just too strong and sometimes the sunsets are less than spectacular. Seriously though, there are some things about living in Mexico that kind of suck. Don't get me wrong, I love living in Mexico, but if you're considering a move to Mexico and something from this list is also on your list of pet peeves so deeply held that you cannot live with it, then it's better to know before you buy your retirement home south of the border. Number one is barking dogs and roosters. Loud noises show up a couple of times on this list, but these two are really common. Roosters only during the day, but dogs bark all the time. Dogs are often left outside at night and bark at everyone who walks by. This is a great deterrent to anyone who might want to misbehave, but it's just a reality. And roosters don't just live on farms. Your neighbor could be producing eggs as their business. Staying on the animal theme, number two, the relationships to animals is different in Mexico than it is in the United States. Now, this isn't a hard and fast rule, and there are lots of exceptions on both sides of the border, but it's something to be aware of. If your heart bleeds every time you see a dog chained to a tree, Mexico may be hard for you, unless you're living inside a resort. But big dogs are mostly guard dogs, and their lives kind of suck. Most dogs aren't fixed. Unfixed males make better guard dogs, and females are often abandoned on the streets. Uh, most of the dogs in the rescue programs are females, but this is a good opportunity to talk about the flip side. There are a lot of Mexicans involved in dog rescue, and they often work with Americans to get these dogs adopted, adopted up in the United States. We live next to what used to be a dog shelter, and people still stop by looking for it. One day my wife was outside when a car pulled up with a dog a young man had found on the side of the road. It was probably hours away from death. My wife coordinated with a rescue group here to get it to a vet and it was recently adopted. The young man cried when he saw that the animal was gonna be taken care of. By the way, it seems like the rule is that little dogs get to live in the house as pets and big dogs are usually relegated to the yard as guardians. There are a lot of street dogs, and many have homes, but they're allowed out. Sadly, this means that we cannot walk our dog in town because all these dogs are protecting their territory. I know some more gringo neighborhoods where people walk their dogs, but not down by us. We are able to go on the beach to walk the dog, but we still carry big sticks just in case. Number three is litter. It seems that there was no crying Indian campaign here in Mexico in the 70s. The relationship to trash is different here. Lots of it ends up in the streets or on beaches and people will dump their home garbage or construction debris on vacant land. The good news is that there are environmental organizations that conduct cleanups and the government has banned plastic bags in many places, including Mexico City and the state of Baja California Sur, where I live. It's not perfect, but it's kind of nice to go grocery shopping in a store that doesn't offer you a bag. It's your responsibility to get your groceries home. Of course, they will sell you a real reusable bag, but everyone brings their own or just loads the groceries directly into their car. Why do us Americans need so many bags anyway? By the way, if you're watching this and you're American, you really don't need so many grocery bags, but you probably should press the subscribe button and that little bell icon to be notified of future videos. Okay, let's talk toilet paper. In most places in Mexico, the toilet paper goes in the trash can, not inside the toilet. The plumbing just isn't up to the task of carrying anything that hasn't already been inside your body. We have a septic tank at our house and we've just decided it's worth emptying it more often, so we flush our toilet paper and we haven't had a problem, knock on wood. But there's always that awkward conversation telling our local guests that they can feel free to flush the toilet paper when they use the bathroom. Number five is not a big one for me, but it nearly made my wife cross Mexico off her list. There are not many bathtubs down here. People take showers. Nicer gringo homes do come with bathtubs, but older homes or less expensive homes are probably missing that feature. Luckily, we found our perfect home and there was a bathtub in one of the bathrooms. Number six is more of a big deal for me, no dishwashers. I hate washing dishes. They pile up and then it's a really big deal. Dishwashers are a luxury here that most people live without. It's possible to get one and they are featured on higher end homes, but they are expensive and hard to find. 
You can't just run into Home Depot and pick up a dishwasher. It will need to be special ordered. You'll probably have a choice of two or three options and the price will probably be twice what it would be for the same unit in the United States. And then if it breaks, good luck finding parts to fix it. Number seven, we haven't experienced this one yet, but other Americans have, and that's running out of water. In the United States, we are just used to water being there every time we turn on the tap. City water in La Paz doesn't run at all hours of the day, and sometimes it won't come for a week or more. And after a week, your cistern may just run dry. There is a whole industry set up around delivering water with big tanker trucks, but just know that it can be a problem depending on where you live. Number eight is really important. The candy down here sucks. There are some Hershey's chocolates and sometimes you'll find Lindell's, but for the most part, if you're not into gummy worms, you're gonna to need to find a good source of candy. On a side note, there are two types of people who watch my videos. There are those who already live in Mexico and those that want to. If you're one of the former, I'd love for you to leave a comment below about the things that you think I should have added to this list. And if you're one of the latter, be sure to read those comments and also ask questions. Number nine brings us back to noise. There is no such thing as a noise ordinance here. Actually, there's no such thing as enforcing a noise ordinance here. The cultural expectation is more live and let live. And the downside of that can be some really loud late night parties with bands playing until 3 a.m. So this is what it sounds like uh, just after 11 o'clock at night. If you're not going to be okay with that and you have more of an American attitude of calling the cops on loud neighbors, then Mexico probably isn't for you. That attitude of impinging on my rights and enforcing the law doesn't really fly down here. So if you like to party until 3 a.m., good for you. Otherwise, buy a sound machine to drown out the sound so that you can get some sleep. Finally, the Mexicans can't seem to understand my English or my Spanish. I've been taking private lessons and my teacher can understand me, and people who work in areas where there's lots of gringos congregating can understand, and they know how to respond in simple and slow Spanish. But if I'm just on the street interacting with someone in Spanish, there's a good chance that we'll have absolutely no idea what the other is trying to communicate. The good news is that Google Translate on your phone can be helpful. The bad news is that sometimes the person is using such obscure language or slang that Google translates it into something like, if the fart doesn't smell, does it matter who farted? And yes, that was an actual translation from a conversation I had here. I really don't understand what the guy was trying to tell me, but he was smiling and laughing and I didn't smell a fart, so I guess all is good. If you've decided that Mexico will still work for you after hearing the downsides and reading the comments, then it's almost time to pack your bags. So check out this video up here about the things you cannot buy in Mexico so that you can load up before your trip down.